What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's transfer tips for game week 29. So we're going to go through some popular players who are being transferred in and out and are people making a mistake? Just some general things to think about with those players. And we're going to start off with Son. And there's a few different ways to take this because I think a lot of people are kind of looking at Son versus Kane. A lot of people are looking at Son versus Kulisevsky as well. Or is he just a good option in his own right? Okay, so we're going to discuss that plus the fixtures. Um, so let's start with that. Them. So one of the key reasons people are looking at Spurs players, I mean, one is they've just beaten Everton 5-0. Let's not pretend that, right? I was watching that. My knees were jerking. I was like, right, I've got to get this player in, got to get that player in. It was just Everton. Spurs have not had many uh, amazing results recently, but they did look really good. And to be fair, on paper, the double, Man United away and Brighton away, probably doesn't look that great. Um, but I think I think Spurs will fancy their chances against both of those teams. Right? Brighton have obviously got Webster out at the moment, haven't had a lot of great results recently. And Man United, like I know, I do feel like the narrative around Man United isn't quite correct. Right? They lost to Man City. That was fully expected. I said that last week when I was talking about Cancelo. I expected Man United to score, so he would lose his clean sheet. But I expected Man City to win. I'm not sure Man United are going to be absolute pushovers for Spurs, but I kind of get the narrative that Man United are at home. They're probably going to have more of the ball and that might suit Spurs better to kind of play on the counter and just try and play through Man United but I feel like if you're expecting them to do what they did against Everton you're probably going to be a little bit shocked I don't think that's how the game's going to go but it is a double and then they do have a game against West Ham, which again, isn't necessarily easy, but at home, the fact they play when lots of other teams don't, and then they've got a great fixture run. There's absolutely no reason not to buy Spurs players because of fixtures. So then the conversation comes on to um, Son versus Kane. Now, there's, again, there's two different things. One, if you're like wild carding, or you're picking one to choose right now, who do you go for? And what do you do if you've got Son already? Now, I've always pretty much said, in isolation, I do prefer Kane to Son. I said that earlier on in the season when Son was outperforming Kane. I'm saying it now when it's perceived that, you know, Kane is, is much, much better than Son. I've always preferred Kane because... He tends to shoot more. His goal threat tends to be a little bit higher. And he's on penalties as well, right? So I do really like Kane. But it's not that simple because there's a £1.5 million price difference. One of the pluses for Kane is he takes a forward spot at a time when, if you look at the £8 million and below bracket, there's hardly any options. So I fully get that. But if you're someone that's not kind of blessed with team value, I don't think going for Son is that bad of an option. The, the key question is about captaincy. Now... In game week 31, they play Newcastle at home. You could captain a Spurs player that week for sure, but Salah plays Watford at home. So how many people are actually going to do that? Probably not that many. In game week 32, Salah plays against Man City. Now, I know everyone's going to say, look at the previous um, result between Liverpool and Man City. I get it, but Man City is always a difficult team. And if you didn't want to captain Salah, you could possibly go for a Spurs player in 32. And then we go on and on and on, but then there's going to be double game weeks and stuff like that. So I don't think you're going to captain a Spurs player that often. But in game week 30, Kane probably is the best captain option, right? It doesn't mean that Son's bad. It just means that Kane is ever, ever so slightly ahead, I would say. So if you want to use that as the excuse to sell Son to Kane, that you then you can. But outside of that, I don't think there's much... I just don't feel like it's that much of a viable move. Like, especially for a hit, that's what people are looking at doing. Using a hit to sell Son to Kane. I'm just not sure that is a great move. I mean, the guy's numbers are incredible. He's scoring a goal every other 90 minutes. He pretty much played... Like, people are talking about substitutions recently, but the 66-minute sub against Everton, he was on a yellow card, and they were 4-0 up, right? It was a good chance to rest him. So I don't think that's suddenly um, a problem. I actually looked at the minutes between Son and Kane, just in case you're worried, since Conte came in, and the difference is something like 37 minutes or, or 40 minutes, something like that. So the difference is kind of neg negligible, to be honest. And he's on 6.3 points per game for the season so i don't really need to sit here and tell you how good he is he's brilliant so i guess just to sum up if you've got son i don't think it's a bad move necessarily to move to kane but i think there's probably other moves that are better for most people's teams if i was wildcarding right now would i choose kane over son i probably would as long as i can get the rest of the squad i wanted to if it meant having i don't know like connor cody for example just as an extreme example instead of reese james and to fund that move, I had to have Son instead of Kane. Then I would 100% go for Son. But if you've got good team value, you can get the squad you want and have Kane, then I would probably do it. So overall, I think Son is a good option. But yes, Kane is pretty damn good as well. 
Okay, so I am recording this video before Thursday when game week 28 finishes. Obviously, there's not, just not enough time to do all the videos on Friday, right? There'd be like five to six videos. So I've not seen Wolves' second game against Watford. I don't know what the lineup is. My gut feeling is that Jimenez will start. I'd be very surprised if something's gone so wrong that he doesn't start three games in a row for Wolves. And so they haven't done that great without him, right? So I feel like as much as he hasn't been great this season, they're not any better without him. So I think he does start against Watford. And I think once that happens that does give people confidence that he would then start against Everton bearing in mind they just got uh, tanked 5-0 I'm not saying Wolves can do that to any team to be honest um, but it is you know good for them to get to play against the Everton defence and then in game week 30 if you're not free hitting obviously if you are it's a little bit different maybe but if you're not then Leeds at home is a good fixture now ultimately I don't think Jimenez is a great option anyway I've said this before I think I've got quite lucky with the amount of points I've got from him his expected goals are not point. 2-2 two, two. that's so low for a striker and he's not even making that up from expected assists so the numbers are really poor they have been all season they haven't been great last year either that one of the key things for him was that he would always get 90 minutes and he had penalties and obviously that's not been the case for either of those things recently penalties are hard to kind of predict but um if you're not on the pitch, you're not going to be taking any. So let's talk about whether I think this is a mistake. Ultimately, no, I don't think it's a mistake, right? He's not very good. There's probably other strikers you could go for. But to be honest, unless you're bringing in Lacazette or Harry Kane, um, and even Lacazette's got like a lot of assists from not very many chances created, to be honest. So even his points could dry up at some point. But unless you're going for Lacazette with a double, the game in 30, the good fixtures afterwards, or Harry Kane, who obviously is a great option, then I'm not even sure who everyone is, is buying right now. Jimenez is bad. So is nearly every other forward in the game right now. And I spoke about them uh, on the watch this video. Like Antonio, obviously you've got Watkins, Tony. I mean, maybe Jamie Vardy, if you can afford it and you think that he's going to get the minutes. But ultimately, there's not too many options so i'm not saying you have to play him in game week 29 for example i might make transfers where i actually bench him but having him for that leeds game and then possibly holding them on to a kind of price point where at some point you might downgrade to another striker like if veghorst has a double and i know everyone's gonna laugh it off that's absolutely fine but when the double comes you're gonna want an attacker i'm almost sure and veghorst will be the one that's kind of what i'm thinking with my own squad is maybe to keep him whether he does well or not against Watford, as long as he starts, um, and just hold on to him until I until I need to get rid of him. Just play other players instead. Maybe play the back four of kind of Trent, Doherty, James, uh, Tierney, and players like that instead, and just have him ready to swap to someone else. I think we kind of sometimes get into a position with these players where we're so annoyed with them, we'll do anything to get rid, and kind of forget that you can just bench them. You don't have to play them and the problem is right now if someone says to me who shall I sell him for I don't really have a great answer because I think a lot of the players that we might want for him kind of for the final stretch just don't have good fixtures in 29 and 30 obviously Calvert-Lewin for example or Richarlison could be options and if you're free hitting they might be the way to go because they got a double in 29 and no fixture in 30 and obviously you can free hit them out then have them from 31 onwards but was anyone impressed with Everton? Has anyone been impressed with Everton recently? Has Calvert-Lewin got enough fitness to play back-to-back -back games? I mean, ultimately, the situation Everton are in right now with relegation, they're going to have to play him, right? But it is a little bit of a punt. So I think with Jimenez, we, we shouldn't panic. He's I don't think he's a great option, right? So you can get rid of him, obviously, if you want, and nearly 50,000 people have. I don't think it's a mistake. But you could hold on to him, depending on what your team situation is. So if you're free-hitting, you can maybe take a punt on Everton players. If you're not free-hitting, in i would be tempted to hold on to him if he doesn't if he starts against watford if he doesn't then it might be time to cash in maybe even just go super super cheap 4.5 million or something like that if you're not worried about bench boosting and just put that money somewhere else in your team we talked about Son. Let's talk about Kulisewski. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through the whole Spurs squad in this video. Um, interestingly, on defenders, I'm going to talk about that probably in the game week preview because I want to see if Sessegnon is out because I do like Doherty as an option, but if Regulon's nailed, that might make him the better pick. So we'll talk about that later on. Kulisewski, only 6.1 million. That price is almost certainly going to go up before the deadline. 140,000 managers nearly have brought him in already. The numbers look great. Obviously, we have to take them with kind of a pinch of salt because he's only played a few games for Spurs so far but 0.67 expected goal involvement per 90 minutes is pretty damn good he's looking good in the team now I think the only kind of slight doubt in my mind and it's very very slight is that 
he has been around and playing matches, but obviously Lucas Moore has been out. But to be honest, how good kudasevsky has been, how well he's linking up with Kane and Son, how well he's working with Doherty down the right as well, like cutting in and letting Doherty run on, I just don't see him missing out. And one key thing about Spurs right now is... Um, they've got no other competitions to play for. They're only playing for that top four in the Premier League. And that means there's less reason to rest players for other competitions. And that is one of the reasons I've really liked Arsenal players recently. is Because they're out of everything else. They're only playing for Premier League. They're getting plenty of rest. It's why Tierney is playing kind of all the time. I mean, he usually plays anyway. But it's just another plus to those players. And that applies to Spurs now. So I don't see a huge amount of rotation. Obviously, the way Conte likes to play, it can sometimes take it out of players. But... I think he came in under Conte. He's performed really well. I won't say nailed, but I don't expect him to miss too many minutes. So if you're worried about that, it's decent. Obviously, got great fixtures as well. The only other thing to talk about is this question of can he cover Son, right? Cover Son. I hate that kind of idea. That's not, in my opinion, that's not really how you should be looking at it. You should be looking at do I have you know, nearly 10 plus million to spend on a player. Is Son better than Kudasevsky? Do I have that money? Because at the end of the day, you can't have a squad that's just full of value players. At some point, the value goes out of the window and you just buy good players like Son, right? Um, so I think if you're... For me, it's still Son versus Kane. You pick which one you want. Some of you will be able to afford both. Some of you will decide to do that with or without Salah. Right? That's up to you. But for most people, the, the conversation is Son versus Kane, not Son versus Kudasevsky. I think in his own right, at 6.1 million, he is a great option versus other midfielders at that price. The likes of you know Saka, Martinelli, Rafinha, they're the ones we're comparing to. For what it's worth, if I was bringing in a midfielder this week and I had an Arsenal spot, I do think that possibly Saka or Martinelli could be better options than Kulisevsky. But if you've got them and you've got Rafinha or you don't want Rafinha, which is fair enough if you don't want him, then Kulisevsky is just a great option. Stop worrying about covering Son. You can own both. You can have Kulisevsky and Son. You can have Kulisevsky and Kane. It's not a problem. But I, I just don't see it as cover. I still think Son is the better option between the two. But there's a massive price difference, right? So these, these things all have to be factored in. So it's a great option. If you've got a slot for a 6.1, you want a double game weaker, a game in 30, great fixtures afterwards. He's just all around decent, and I might bring him in myself this week. All right, let's talk about Bowen. I did talk about him last week. When I was redoing the graphic for this week, he has fallen 0.2 million. So anyone that was worried about buying him back, there's not going to be any huge issues when you need to do that. He's had nearly 270,000 transfers out already. Now, obviously, he did pick up an injury against Liverpool, which is definitely kind of boosting the amount of sales that he's had. Um, West Ham have said there's no significant damage, but they haven't really gone on to say how long he'll be out for. They've basically said um, no significant injury has occurred. He'll continue to be monitored and have further examinations. So he could still be out. So we need to monitor that. If he's out for Villa, I think you definitely sell him. The one thing with someone like Bowen is the later and later you leave it to sell him, the less kind of viable that sell is because he's got that game in 30 again if you're not free hit and if you are it's a bit different and then Everton Brentford and Burnley straight after are three pretty good fixtures so unless you were getting like a double game week player this week if Bowen was fit to play you might keep him but I just think given that the injury and given the worry around it I'm, I'm not a doctor or anything like that but it just feels like he's going to be a doubt for this weekend we'll see what Moy says but I feel like he will be a doubt and because of that he is going to be worth selling so for me, the three main options are, and I think this is whether you're free hitting or not in game week 30, because yes, obviously it means you don't need to worry about that fixture, but I just think Arsenal and Spurs players are still good to bring in regardless. So I think the top three have to be Saka, Martinelli, and uh, Kulisevsky. Now, a lot of people will obviously be looking at Lacazette, and I don't think he's a bad option. I own him myself, but that was partly because Martinelli wasn't available for both games in game week 26. If you remember, he was suspended for one. And Lacazette is, is quite a lot. He's over 8 million, and I think most of the reason why people are looking at him is because there's not very many good forward options. But again, if it was a straight-up uh, choice between just having that forward spot and benching them and playing like 3-5-2 or 4-5-1 and having Martinelli instead, there's a lot more value in that and you can then use that money to spend elsewhere. Because Martinelli is like, what, nearly £3 million cheaper than Lacazette. So I like all three of those options. Saka, 
Martinelli, if you haven't got two Arsenal, or Kulisevsky, I would pretty much bring all of them in for Bowen this week. Maybe even, if he's out, definitely for a hit. Even if he's not out, I would still consider it, but obviously it becomes a little bit less viable. But if Moyes rules him out for this week, or he's a doubt against Villa, a hit to any of those players, Saka, Martinelli, or Kulisevsky, is pretty much ideal, I would say. In terms of ranking them, it gets really hard. I think Saka is still the best option of all three. Although Kulisevsky's numbers are great so far, obviously, we've only seen that over a short period of time. And I think Saka has just done it for most of the seasons. He would be my top. Martinelli versus Kulisevsky gets a little bit more trickier. I think it's kind of more... I don't want to sit on the fence, but I feel like it's kind of equal. I, I actually still think that Arsenal's fixtures, even though they play Liverpool, could be quite open. And Leicester at home is not bad either. And I think their fixture in the 30s is okay as well. And the fixtures afterwards are quite good. And do they have a slight more chance of doubling in 33 than Spurs? Possibly, but we don't know that for sure. So I'd maybe, maybe just have Marseille ever so slightly ahead of Kudaseski. But it's so close that if you wanted to go for the Spurs, man, just do it. So Bowen, in most cases, I think he's a pretty good sell at this point. And obviously, if he's injured, then it's, it's a no-brainer. If you enjoyed that video, please do give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you are new around here. I may be back tomorrow with another video. If not, I'm going to have team selection and game week preview on Friday once all the game week 28 fixtures are done. And obviously, once we've seen press conferences and stuff like that so we know the lay of the land the deadline stream on saturday thank you very much for watching give it a like if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button if you're new and i'll catch you again soon